and tell you what an amazing journey uh, that we've been going on. And I'm going to tell you, the journey just reminds me of Jesus, what it reminds me of, because that's what he was all about. He was all about looking at the needs of the people. He was meeting people constantly who had horrible, difficult needs, but he was the master, and he was able to, to touch people. No wonder they flocked and came to him, but his ingredient was love. He loved them all. He was always, his arms was open. He never was crossed. He didn't, you know, weigh them down with tons of rules and regulations. He opened them up to freedom to be able to receive the things of God. And it's, it's just amazing to me that uh, those that you would have thought had read the scriptures and understood them, who could quote the five, first five books of the Bible, and, and they could quote 300 verses by, word by word of the coming of the Messiah. And yet when he came, they did not recognize him. They had no idea he was anywhere in the midst, except a few of them, maybe Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who later uh, come from the, the Sanhedrin and all of that Pharisee group. And thank God he reached Paul, one of the, one of the, the Pharisee of all Pharisees. He reached him and he changed nations after nations after nations. That's what they're doing, igniting the fire, blazing fire of nations to do something about the people who are hurting, the children. We cannot neglect those that are out in the fields doing what they do. They need our prayer. We need to be on our faces before God, asking Him to touch people who are out doing the work of the kingdom. And when we can financially help, we should do that. It, it, little is much when it's put in the hands of God and a whole bunch of us come together doing it. It would be amazing what could be accomplished. It's the same way as I give you this. It's the same way with salvation. I don't care if you're in a prison cell right now and whatever you did. I, I, I don't know if you, you know, you're just in a deep hole of depression. I don't know if you're in a deep hole of anxiety. I don't know if you're an alcoholic like I was or a, a drug person and you're just caught up and eat up with all kind of stuff, God is able to set you free through Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. I'm telling you, He'll, he'll reach your pit. As David said, He reached deep down in the pit and brought me up and out and set my feet on a solid rock. He'll give you hope beyond the grave and eternal life. And, and he'll, do, he'll write your name in the eternal book of life. And when the roll's called up yonder, you'll be there. You say, well, God, that sounds good today. What I do? i tell you what you do. You, you ask him to forgive your sins. And when you do that, it's called repentance. You turn away and you start following the Lord. You open up that Bible and you start learning everything you can about Jesus. You, you invite him into your life, not just as a, well, I want to get some fire insurance. No, no, no. We invite him in for a life change. For the rest of our lives, we dedicate ourselves to be sold out to Jesus. We give him our life. We surrender everything we've got to him. And we let him have our life and do with it as he pleases. How about that? Now, would you like to do that? Just say, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me in your blood. I want Jesus to take care of my life right now and to write my name in that eternal book of life. If you prayed that, call in. We'd like to talk to you. We've got people ready to pray, okay? God bless you. The, the Mattingly family is going to sing, Get Out of the Boat. So get out of that boat and let's get to know Jesus. Amen. Are you cruising along, taking your ease while others go astray? Sometimes too busy to reach out a hand to a neighbor along the way. Why have you told him about salvation plan or do you leave it all up to the preacher man? Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. Come on, get onto the shore, there's work for us to do. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. The day is gone, the night's coming on, and the laborers are so few. Are you warming the pew in the church where you go, or do you take time to pray? 
For the one who's bringing God's holy word to be given the words to say. Well, do we blame ourselves when the church's coals aren't moving for Jesus? Carry your load, get out of the boat, start walking on the water. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. Come on, get onto the shore, there's work for us to do. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. The day is gone, the night's coming on, and the laborers are so few. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. On the water. Come on, get onto the shore, there's work for us to do. Get out of the boat, start walking on the water. The day is gone, the night's coming on, and the laborers are so few. The day is gone, the night's coming on, and the laborers are so few. Yes, well, amen and amen. I still give you that open door to make the call and let's surrender your life to Jesus be the greatest decision you ever made in your life. Well, let's, let's go back to back in the things in Nepal and ignite the nations and this sort of thing and tell us what's, 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 uh, what's on your mind now. No, so, um, so, yeah, so doing all of this water projects yeah. and rescuing kids out of trafficking, it's all part of of the heart of God and the heart of, that Christ has for every community. And he wants to see transformation in every community. I mean, if we, if we look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, well, it's actually he's reading from the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And well, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. to preach the good news. The gospel is good news. That's right. And it, but, and, and it begins, everything starts with salvation through Jesus' name, but then it, he didn't stop there. Nope. He said, heal the brokenhearted, mm. set at liberty those who are oppressed, mm. and, and the opening of prison doors to those who are bound. Right. And so God wants to bring holistic healing to whole communities. No, I agree with that. And um, so I, I'll just tell you, for, I, I want this to this session, Dave, to be a little bit of an example to your audience. And mm -hmm. to, if you're watching this and you're saying, well, what difference can I make in the world? What if I, these are great testimonies. Man, I want to rescue kids out of trafficking. Man, I want to do water projects. Um, but how can I help my own local community? And so I'm going to tell you another story. Hmm. Be of, of one of the other things we're doing to transform a whole community because I want you to think about, you know, think about your community. And it might not be the same as in northern India and Nepal where they don't have any water and they don't, they have um, these other problems that we don't have in South Carolina, <laughs> we right. don't have in America, right? But it's all can translate right over. There's similarities, there's models of what is happening over there that can be used in your local area because if the love of Christ is in you mm -hmm. and you just let the love of Christ flow out of you and you say, Lord, use me, just like you said of Amr, he was available. Jesus. If you're just available and you say, Lord, show me how I can make a difference, yeah. he'll do it. He'll use you powerfully. Um, in Northern India, one of our projects now is called a Win Village and where we, we, we look at the government records and we say, what villages out there are the worst? They got the worst trafficking, they've got the worst infrastructure, they don't have proper roads, they don't have water, they don't have, they've got, they don't have proper schooling for the children. Mm. And then we go into that village and we come alongside of the local government people. That's also what Umar's doing. He's coming alongside of the local uh, authorities. Yes. He's not just going over and starting something unique as a Christian project over here, but we're, say, we're coming to the local government and saying, how can we serve this community? What are the problems in this community? And then they are sharing their heart with us. And then we start to train them 
and we start to change their heart. Yep. And that's something that Ummer is passionate about, is yes. changing the heart of the people because until their heart is changed, oh, no. the, there's never going to be long-term change in the community. Until their heart is changed, the corruption is still gonna be there. Yep. The, the, the sex trafficking is still going to be there. Um, the dishonesty is still going to be And they're not going to prosper. You see, the Bible is the constitution for how, the pl how planet Earth is to be run. That's right. And to the extent that people align their lives with the Bible, they will be blessed. Mm -hmm. To the extent that a community aligns and follows the principles of the Bible, they will be blessed because God wants to bless us. He wants to heal our land. He wants to heal our cities. He wants to heal your family. And as you will say, Lord, here I am, I'm available, and I will follow you. I will um, practice what the, <clears throat> what the Bible says. Yep. <clears throat> Amr, you're, the, you're also the one that's always saying heart change. What would you like to say to that as um, what can we learn from this vision for changing our hearts? Hmm. Like the one thing is basically what we think develop means road, constructions, like buildings, whatever. Like we feel that's the develop. Yeah, that's the developing for outside. Yep. But mm -hmm. second generation, that's what right. they did, if we are not changing their hearts, if we are not built develop hearts, and corruption is there, sex trafficking is there. So I'm not thinking about first generation, I'm thinking about second, third, fourth generations. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to like stem, okay. I want to change their heart. And after that, it's only possible if I want to change their heart and everything will stop. And after that, you know, developing mm -hmm. is going on day by day. You know, now every day I prayed, you know, I asked the God, God, please give me the problems in my life mm -hmm. and give me the strength to solve that problem also. Yeah. Without problems, mm -hmm. you are not close with the God. That's right. Yeah. If you have a facility, you know, mm -hmm. you forgot the God. Where is God? Sometimes, oh, <laughs> I am a God. I have everything. Like that we think. We are human beings. So that's why, you know, without problems, there is no life. Yeah, there is no There problem. is no life. No problem, there is no life. I prayed every day. Now this is the time for America. America yes, need to wake right. up. Yes. Like, you know, every time I just said, like, what is real America? I'm not find out now. I, learned, I read the book of America. What is real, real America? Real America is a value of biblical Bibles. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, yeah, all over the world is coming. That's very good. If you came here, you need to adopt American culture. Mm -hmm. You need to respect American culture. If you are not respect your culture, if you are not respect your nation, how can we trust? How you respect the God? Yeah. That's my question. Now this is the time to wake up. Yeah, the identity the of America is based on biblical values. Yes. And we need to hold to those biblical values and God will bless our, bless our nation. Yeah, and God's always had a remnant. Yes. Always right. around where it can grow and grow. So I tell each and everyone, those who are coming from Nepal for the missionary, for the visionary, Please, adopt our culture. We don't, we don't want to change our culture. That's we don't right. want to change our identity. Nepal is our identity. That's right. And God wants that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we want to praise God for the Nepali culture. Yeah, absolutely. We want to love, we want to enjoy the gods for the Nepali culture. We don't want Western culture. That's right. You know, that's our identity. Yeah. So, you know, I just humbly request for each and everyone. We really like to welcome you. And yeah, we need you. We need your supports. Yeah. But, but this is thing. such a lesson for missions, any missions works, because we are so bad about importing our Western culture into those nations. And I did the same thing in the beginning. Yeah. God had to teach me that no, their culture is really, I mean, there's always pieces of culture that are not uh, aligned with the Bible, okay, like like Chinese foot binding, for example, and sati, where they burn the widow on the funeral pile of her husband. Okay, those are those are demonic things. But ninety percent of culture is beautiful and not sinful. So we should we should bring the gospel into culture rather than trying to impose 
our culture Absolutely. on that. And when we would do that, it's going to open people's hearts up to Christ in a way they would have never opened their hearts before. Yeah, it's like we're not trying to take over. That's we're right. coming alongside you. That's right. And, and it is the heart matter. Yeah. And once we ever get the, the heart straightened out with the other people, then unity becomes yeah. a part and we begin to think alike how we can help one another and help those that are down and out. And then they start seeing progress mm -hmm. and then they, the, the people see that right. the, the, the people in the, the cities or those that are government officials and they see that help is being accomplished. Hey, things are different. Have you noticed a little bit of this has been done, that's been done? Mm -hmm. Now that changes people's minds and hearts. Yes. Well, yes. notice that Jesus, everything he did when he was living among us, he was demonstrating God's rule in yes. the earth. He didn't just go out and preach. Yeah, he right. demonstrated. He loved on people. Oh. He fed them. <laughs> he per, he healed yeah. them. Yeah. He defended the weak. Yes. He yeah. uh, defended the oppressed. <laughs> and then he taught the principles of righteousness, the principles of God's kingdom. And so he was demonstrating what he he said, pray that thy kingdom come, God's kingdom That's would right. come on earth as it is in heaven. And this is the vision. We need to be going out into mm -hmm. our communities and just being Jesus to those people mm -hmm. and loving people right where they're at. Because when they see Jesus in us, that's going to, he says, um, if I be lifted up, yep. I will draw all people to myself. So Why are we, what are we fretting about? We just need to be Jesus to people yes. and love them where they're at in their culture, in whatever culture they are. And God will draw them to himself. And guess what? They're going to come to know him. Absolutely. And God is full of resources. Yeah. Amen. We, you know, we don't have to just go twirling our fingers and all. No, when God gets into something, and he's into us, and he begins to set the fires on us to mm -hmm. go places. It's amazing to me how it just happens. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he he makes a way, and I I I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. It just it, yeah. it just yeah. it just happens. That, we pray that for you guys. That village I was telling you about, what we're doing called Wind Villages in northern India. So one of our examples, it's called Barema Village, and uh, where we went in and we taught them the principles of the Bible. So stop the corruption, stop the trafficking, stop sending your kids into child labor, start doing the biblical principles. Of course, a church had already been planted, so the gospel was already established there. And then they started to, we taught them bibl um, biblical values of stewardship, mm. how to save their money instead of spend it on the witch doctor and everything, and on the stop the alcoholism. And you know what? Within a year and a half, they saved enough money that they tore down their mud huts and they built themselves brick and mortar houses. This is their Whoa. own money. This isn't out yeah. from outside. Yeah. And the, the government was so amazed that then the government came in and built them um, uh, sanitation systems for each home. Oh, I mean. And so, see, this all started with teaching the native people how to align themselves with the biblical values. And we taught them health and hygiene. We had an yep, education yep. center Go for the ahead. children. And so, so it yeah. transformed the whole village. Yeah. This is the kingdom. This is God's kingdom yeah. coming. And, well, and being demonstrated in, in our midst. I yeah. have found that when I can do the work and I can get in the middle of all of it, I take much more pride in what, what's going on rather than somebody just right. handing it to me. And that's Amen, sort of, yes. Although I know there's some people that need, they'll need certain yeah. helps along the way because it's just, it, they're just not gonna be able to do it. Yeah. But the ones who do, like men, I find especially with men, if they can be actively involved it does something to that man. Right. Yes. It, ma it makes him feel like a man. Right. Yeah. I'm accomplishing something, and oh wow, look at it! Wow, I got you know. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it's not much. It's 16 by 16 room, but it's nice, and it's concrete slab, mm -hmm. and it's metal, and it's tin mm -hmm. roofs, and it's not going to decay. Mm -hmm. It's not going so good. Yeah. Not alive. That's what I like. Yeah. I love to hear that kind of thing. Well, we're going to break away to the Mattingly family, and they'll be singing exceedingly. Marvelous are the moments I've experienced with the Lord Amazing revelations He has shown me in His Word His incredible impossibles are thrilling to my soul Till I am sure there's so much more to know He still
essence of his lessons in his presence every day. So gracious is his favor as he gives himself away. Pursuing me and deity, how could I ask for more? I cannot comprehend my loving Lord. He still exceeds, he still exceeds my, understanding. my understanding abundantly. Abundantly, he meets my need, my highest dream, my highest dream. He, still he still surpasses, he blesses me. Sometimes you've got to kick back and just praise God, give Him the glory. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 what I have found is being thankful about is about everything. Just be thankful every day. Amen. Think of the things that you're talking to the Father about, and just start thanking Him for it. It's amazing how the atmosphere changes, how your attitude changes, everything around you starts changing because you're thankful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've got, I guess, maybe about five minutes. So we need to get on down to some uh, other things that you've got on your heart. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, well, the last thing I'd like to say uh, today, to, to the audience especially, you know, is that we, um, you have uh, the anointing. If you know Jesus, you have the anointing to make a difference in the world. Yes, and, and you've been saved for a purpose. You have a purpose Amen. on this earth. Don't just wait to go to heaven. I mean, we go, we're <laughs> alive on this earth. I can come on, praise God, we're going to heaven. Yeah. But we're alive right now on this earth, and God's got something for you to do to bring His love to somebody else out That's there. Right. And everything we've shared, all these stories, and yeah, these are happening in other countries, but there's hurting people right outside of your door. <sighs> And you can do something to bring hope to them. You can do something to uh, help lift them up in a sustainable way to out of the poverty or out of the suffering or out of the brokenness that they're in. Um, um, just one, the last thing we're doing, I want to share yeah. that what we're doing in Nepal specifically. Um, and again, you can get encouragement from this mm -hmm. because we have a vision for the lo for long term transformation. Um, in Nepal. Number one, and I mentioned it before, we want to stop the child trafficking and we want to empower the next generation to, to not be in poverty like their parents have been. And really it's like, well, how do we do that? Well, what we've said is let's not just go over here and start our own project as Christians over here. Let's come alongside of the Long nation side. And let's come alongside of the local authorities. So what we're going to be doing, and this is just a, just a beginning yeah. point for this vision, but we've, we're doing it already in India in different ways. But we're going to be coming alongside of the public schools in Nepal. Mm. And, say, and first we come in with teaching. And we teach them how to stop the trafficking. We teach them how to keep the kids safe. We teach them how to watch out for the traffickers. But then we say, how can we train the teachers and equip the teachers to be to teach the kids better? Because mm. the reason they don't want to yeah. send their kids, their kids, kids to the, per, the public schools in, in these nations is because the education quality yeah. is so bad. And so we'll come alongside of the teachers and train them, provide water if they don't have any water uh, well for that villa, for that school, mm -hmm. provide desks, provide. Um, um, whiteboards, yeah. um, whatever they need to upgrade the school. Some of these public schools don't even have a blackboard mm. or they don't even have proper desks for the kids. They don't have any water for the kids to drink. And, and so we want to just upgrade that and see these kids set up for a bright future. 
Um, and so these are things we're doing to bring sustainable change yes. to the nation. You want to say? Yeah. Like, you know, the Jesus, why Jesus is king? Jesus have come not to be served, mm -hmm. but, but to yes. serve. Amen. So when he crucified and after that he giving us the golden opportunity, now this is your time to serve mm -hmm. your nations. Yes. Guys, why we are waiting? Yeah. Time is so short. Yes. We don't know what is next happening. This is the time. Oh, this is the, the right time. time to serve it's the time. for the needy, yes. needy yeah. area. Millions of needy and needy people are waiting. For you, this is your time. Yes. You know, this is your time. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's time. Yeah. Yeah, I, li I like that. I like you young fire, young blazing fire, ready to go and take it to the nations of the earth. Huh? Amen. You're ready to ignite them. I like that about you. And uh, that's, what, that's what the Lord does. He ignites his people with a fire, Matthew 3 and 11. I baptize you in water, baptize uh, in which a lot of them say, and I baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and I also baptize you in fire. Amen. And that's, uh, I understand that because it happened to me. And that's why I do what I do. It was none of my own business, none of my own thinking. He did it. And when the fire came, mm -hmm. there was nothing else I could do because my eyes were open to see mm -hmm. things that he would allow me to see. And, it, it, and he only lets you see a, a small portions. He don't want you to see the whole thing. Just chisel away, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, you realize, oh, my goodness, right. look what is going on. We wait for him. We stay steadfast and unmovable in the Word of God. We yield ourselves in prayer to hear from God who gives us a direction. We refuse to come out and do anything until he speaks and says, this is the route, this is the path I want you on. And that's what we've got to do. Amen. Amen. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. Listen, folks, some of you have called in. I looked at it, finances. I looked, uh, I saw where there was sickness in here and people with ankle, ankle problems and people with lost loved ones, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. I want you to know, God, we touch them. We believe God for miracles out of this, that God will meet these needs in the powerful name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the stripes of Jesus. In his name, amen. Till next time, God bless you and we love you.